Hey guys, J. Broader Performance. All right, uh, we're going to talk about the high gear drum in the C4. This clutch pack tends to be the weakest link in the unit, and uh, as I've said a lot, a lot of times it's valve body design, but also a couple things. It's uh, could be the way this clutch pack is assembled and stacked and all that sort of thing. Now, what I typically do on a performance unit is I like six frictions. And the key thing with the six frictions is you want to have, you want to have the 78 thou thick steels. It's okay to run the 60 thou thick frictions, but I prefer the 78 thou steels and I also prefer the full size pressure plate. I know you can get these kits that have, you know, 60 thou steels and a thin pressure plate. Don't do it. I know they try to tell you, well, it's choline and it's this and that. And yeah, that's not going to help. You know, not in my experience. And I've never really been a fan of choline. I just don't think it works. I, I don't really get it. I don't get the concept. I've tried it. It's never solved a problem. Uh, they're expensive. Uh, I just have never seen a reason to justify the cost. But just my opinion, you know, just like we can go back and forth all day on what the better friction is. And, you know, to me, that stuff is not really the most important thing to worry about. You know, it's it's the valve body. It's the hydraulics. It's keeping it cool. Um it's, like I said, putting the clutch pack together properly, proper clearance and proper sealing rings. All these other things are, to me, are way more important than, you know, what type or brand of friction you have in there or whether it's choline steels or not. Uh, just my opinion there. But so I used to sell a lot of these drums done and stacked with six and seven frictions. Uh, they came either way. The seven friction requires a drum Ford only made for like one or two years. And those are really hard to find. And uh, I, you know, you know, had had a bunch of them at one time, but all, all that stuff's gone now. And uh, I, I can't even get the regular drums now, oddly. And so you don't see these drums for sale on the site too often anymore unfortunately uh but you know i guess you can buy them new now they make them out of aluminum and i don't know you know aluminum doesn't really last forever uh it's nice because it's new and it's lightweight but it doesn't really last and that can be an issue too but uh anyway so i'm working with the cast iron drums i honestly prefer these over the aluminum uh, so anyways, and I'm not going to give you dimensions on this, and the God's honest truth, I can't, because getting six or seven frictions in these drums, it's, it's kind of like jazz, you know, you have to improvise. Uh, when you start really digging into these drums, and, you know, you, it's very difficult to get six or seven in with the thick steels, so you're really kind of very carefully trimming a little here, trimming a little there to make it happen. And get whatever clearance you're looking for. Uh, so it gets a little tricky. But I'm going to just give you a quick rundown of how I do this. Uh, so your piston, I've already installed it. But uh, you, you are able to remove some from the piston. Uh, not, you know, can't go crazy. But, you know, you got a groove down here you have to contend with. So you can only take so much off of that and that varies on the drum honestly as to how much you can do uh, and the number's always a little different so I really can't tell you how much to take off um, alright the original groove was down here I machined another groove up here and this is important because you have to leave this material in between this is what's gonna hold your pressure plate from spinning you can't just put a big wide groove up here I've seen people do that to these drums and other drums and they just ruin them uh, you gotta have the right uh, grooving tool 
And, you know, it's, I think you can buy, you know, I know you can buy grooving tools nowadays, carbide, but I'm kind of old school. I make my own out of high speed steel. I've had really good luck with it and they, they don't mind intermittent cuts and they last a long time on this material. So, and I can make them whatever width I want. Um, but anyways, so you got to cut a groove here. That's critical. And you can't, um, you know, this groove here is too low. And these kits I'm talking about will still use this groove, which is nice. But you got the real thin pressure plate. And you got the thin steels. And your pressure plate needs to be thick. You can't make it thin. The assembly is just going to crown on you. You're not going to get the, you know, the gripping power that you need. So that can be an issue. Uh, so here's, you know, here's one together and you can see I just cut a little step here and I didn't go all the way across. This is the 220 pressure plate, normal stock plate. And I just cut what I needed here to get my clearance. And, you know, the other thing is a different thickness snap rings and things. Um, you know, how much you have to cut that depends on what snap ring you have and how much clearance you're looking for. And just what you could turn, you know, come out to. So again, it's a little bit different every time. Uh, but you know, if you're faced with, well, I can't machine all that, or I don't want to machine all that. If that's your situation, which is probably most people, don't resort to that six pack. In my opinion, with the thin steels and thin pressure plate, I would. Do this as a five clutch uh, with the thick pressure plate and the thick steels. I think that will hold up better. I've seen that hold up better uh, than doing the other way. Uh, I know, you know, some of you guys have probably used that kit and will argue this. Hey, you know, if you've had good luck with it, great. You know, whatever, stick to it. I'm just telling you my experience uh, for what it's worth to you. Uh, so the other thing is, you know, I had a problem years ago, you know, we sell trans brake valve bodies and a lot of guys were drilling a hole in this drum. To, I, I guess, you know, the theory is that at high RPM, whatever oil is left behind the piston gets trapped there and it will apply the piston in first gear and it burns your clutches up. So there's a lot of guys out there telling you to drill a hole in this drum and basically create a leak and you're creating an area uh, for any residual oil to just kind of sling out of there uh, to just debunk any chance of that theory where, you know, whatever oil is left in there is going to start to sling to the outside of the drum and apply the drum when, it, when you don't want to apply it. You know, I don't know how much that really matters. You know, it's um, it's a theory. I buy into it somewhat, but I'm not real big on it anymore. Uh, so let me show you something on a C4. If you haven't noticed this already, right here is a small hole drilled in the piston. So this... This creates a leak. Now, when the clutch pack applies, it will kind of close this area off against the steel, and then that leak becomes a lot less. Uh, so what I was getting at with the trans brake valve bodies, and I, I apologize, I got sidetracked, but I would occasionally run into a person that would say, hey, man, um, when I put the trans brake on, it'll drive through... You know, once I get the RPMs up to, you know, whatever, 3,000 or something as an example, the trans brake's not holding. Well, what I found out, and you know, and they'd send the trans brake back and I'd test it and all that. And it's like, man, I don't know what you're talking about. You got a problem in the unit. No, I don't have a problem in the unit. Well, I'm just not seeing the problem here. I, I don't know. You know, so this would be, this would become a sticky situation with uh, the customer, you know. Well, long story short, what I found out is that a lot of people were recommended to drill a hole in the drum and you have the leak all the time. 
And some of them would drill in a pretty big hole, you know, a sixteenth of an inch or so. And I know that doesn't sound big, but it creates a pressure drop is what it does. So depending on the size of the hole that's feeding the drum and the size of the hole that you create as a leak, you know, not to mention you do get leakage past your ceiling rings and things like that, whether you like to think so or not. Uh, you do. I mean, you just have other leaks. So, you know, you go and drill a sixteenth of an inch hole in here full time, you know, through the drum itself, not into the piston, uh, like what I'm showing you here, you're creating a pressure drop. So whatever, say if your line pressure is at 200 pounds, for example, you drill that little sixteenth of an inch hole, well, with the feed hole I had feeding the trans brake circuit, you know, you might have only had 120 pounds of pressure in the drum, and it wasn't enough to hold back a monster motor on a trans brake. You know, so this was what was causing the problem. So what I've done, you know, years ago, just to combat this, when I realized this is what people were doing, I just increased the feed hole size to the trans brake circuit, and, you know, to try to cover up that leak if they decide to put it in there. Because I can't, I don't tell people to do this, but on the other hand, they hear something from somebody else or, you know, this mod works great in a, whatever, a power glide or a 400 or something or whatever they're used to working on. And they go ahead and do this on a C4 and, well, it causes problems. So, uh, so that's what I had to do because I never know... You know, you sell valve bodies to people, you have no idea what the build is, and a lot of times a customer doesn't even know what's in there. You know, they may have bought the unit and always had that hole. They didn't even know it was even supposed to be there. Uh, you know, and you can ask them, did you drill a hole? No, I didn't drill in the holes. But there was a hole there already, so you just don't know. Uh, so anyways, you know, in my opinion, the hole that's in this piston here, seems to work it's already there uh it's up to you if you want to drill a hole in the drum you know full time in a different spot uh, I, I wouldn't go as big as a 16th i'd really like to see you do a 32nd you know uh but again you know i have kind of compensated for this in my valve body uh, I was kind of forced to, so, you know, I guess, you know, it's up to you. I can't really say I've done a lot of controlled testing on this theory and exactly how much hole you need, exactly where it needs to be placed. I really challenge it. Anybody out there promoting this modification has done real, true controlled testing on it, you know, maybe kind of you know, build up an assumption over time in a drag car they ran or something. Yeah, it seemed to be a little better when we drilled the hole. I don't know. Well, okay, but how much hole do we need, you know, and uh, all that sort of thing. So, anyways, um, I think that kind of gives you an idea on what to do with this drum. Because this is a very important drum. This is usually what fails first in the unit. Uh, so, okay, I, I can't really think of anything else I need to tell you. And uh, it's just, you know, another situation where if you can't buy this drum from me or somebody else done like this, and there may be some other guys that sell it or maybe they'll do it for you. Uh, again, I, you know, I've done this for people. They send the drum in and I'll do it, but I, I just can't promise you that if you wanted to send this in I can hop on it the second it gets here and fly it out of here the next day I just I, I'm generally too busy it's going to be here a couple weeks and if you can't wait and you're going to drive me crazy and yourself crazy please don't send it you know I just I'm one man and I, I can only do so much you know I'm here to help but uh, you got to understand my situation too, and I know everybody, they only have their situation to worry about, and that, you know, they only have themselves to think about. But I generally have between 30 to 50 people 
at any given moment to worry about. So it's hard to turn you into something special. You know, it's, uh, I got to be honest with you there. You know, I, what do you do when you got 50 people at once feel like, hey, look, are we, I've got a race this weekend and you got to help me out. Well, guess what? 49 other people do too. You know, what do I do? I mean, what I, what I do is first come, first serve. Um, and nowadays, honestly, it's a lot of times it's whatever job you got enough parts to finish. You know, that's parts are still an issue. I got to be honest with you. Yeah, it's gotten better in the last year or two than it was three years ago. But it's still not where you want it to be, you know. And um, yeah, I, I know you guys hear this a lot from a lot of places and you're sick of hearing it, but. I got to just back up anybody that's saying it. It's not a lie. It's not an excuse. And as much as you try to order and keep things on the shelf and plan ahead, it's it's hard. And, you know, money money's tight, too. You can only put so much on your shelf these days, you know. Prices of everything have gone up. And we really need to go up on our prices a lot more than we have. And I, we're just trying to... Do it slowly over time and not overwhelm people with increased prices. So, anyways, I guess uh, I apologize. That's probably another video talking about supply chain issues and uh, lead times. But um, in any case, that's all I got to show you on this drum. And I appreciate you watching and I hope that helped. And um, please subscribe to this channel and support this channel. And I'll keep trying to do these videos and try to show you stuff. And um, and again, this is, you know, 20 to 25 years of experience I've got here. And I'm not right about everything, but I've learned an awful lot. And I've made a lot of changes over the years, too, and, and the way I do things. And I try to keep on top of things and... I try to also be, you know, realistic. You know, some people are stubborn. They'll never, they'll never change. No, the problem's not me. I've got this down. Well, you know, things can always be better, you know, and over time I've learned that and I make tweaks and I'll say, yeah, you know, I've got a better way of doing that now. I'm not afraid to admit that, you know, just like I'm telling you with this bleed hole. I don't know what the perfect size or the perfect location is. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's a difficult thing to really track down and have a solid black or white opinion on it, you know. I believe that can be done, uh, but I just haven't done that kind of R&D on it. So, anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and um, we'll see you on another video.